Okay, we're here. Last stage of the bakery. Mm -hmm. First stage of the seven, Herald Sun Tour. You've got two teams here, have you? Yeah, we, we brought nine riders over. So uh, we've had uh, six riders, so five riders in the uh, elite race of the bakery, and then four guys that have played in the support race of the bakery. So, as you know, we've got a fairly young team. So the idea of coming over here is to uh, you know, give them some racing experience more than anything else. The training aspects, I'm fairly confident they, uh, with all their coaches that they've got these days. And, all the access to the internet, they're uh, they're all pretty, you know, uh, clued up as to what training they should be doing. But one thing that I've identified with a lot of the young riders in the UK, is, you know, in particular, is the set of race skills need a little bit of, uh, you know, that, that fine could be tuning. Improved. Yeah, fine tuning. So these races here in uh, you know in Australia and the level of racing here in Australia is fantastic. Uh, it's a good level. Coupled with obviously excellent weather means that instead of doing two training camps in sort of southern Europe as we've done in the past. We've invested in you know coming over here to Australia. At the same time, we've also obviously got the Sun Tour taking place. So whilst the level of the Sun Tour is probably a little bit high for some of our riders, it's still a good opportunity for them to sort of experience racing with Pro Tour riders and uh, and, and the like, and some other really top class Australian riders. So that's probably going to be you know quite difficult for them. Um, but because uh, yeah, there's, there's there's teams like your Budget Forklift, your Dre Pack, good teams. who have they're obviously they're, they're like riders who are aiming for the nationals which is in a week absolutely well, it's, so you know, it's like the, you say the levels yeah it's the i mean for them it's the equivalent you know, of the tour of britain the, the domestic yeah. teams in, you know here in australia can't race the tour down under so as a consequence they, you know this is the next biggest race for them now so uh, it comes at the time of the year everybody's mad keen uh, you know it's a new season new start so yeah. to speak so yeah what, what do you reckon on the scene here compared to the uk especially melbourne is this i'm guessing this isn't the first time you guys have been here no i've been a few times now yeah, yeah. the first time i came over was 10 years ago we quickly identified the scene here is very very strong yeah was that with mg no we came over with the gb team we went oh, over right. to yeah gb team that came over to do the uh the christmas carnivals on the track right yeah so, yeah and uh, so that's it was actually here where rod ellingworth the, you know, the team sky coach now sort yeah. of developed his academy principles he you know he brought a group of riders out here it didn't work as well as he wanted to and decided right we're gonna have to do it boot camp fish boot camp fashion and that's what he set up you know, a year later the academy started with the likes of Wiggins uh, Cavendish uh, Clancy they were all part of that Geraint Thomas they were all part of because that that before coming. that was a world-class performance program. Well, it still is a world-class performance program which is a different way of doing it basically Rod decided to they all had to live together that was it yeah. Categorically, so they all had to. They got a house in the outskirts of Manchester. They all lived together and basically, you know, trained twice a day. Some days they had French lessons, that sort of thing. So all the, it was almost like a school you know, environment. It was very, you know, very much full on the, the approach, even down to teaching them, you know, cleaning their bikes properly, that sort of thing. Everything yeah, that you how think to riders cook for themselves. Know, yeah, yeah. So I even went in at one point to show them how to cook because you know you've got like 18 year old lads that have been looked after by parents yeah. so, you know, all their lives. So minute so. minute noodles. <laughs> you can keep away from them, yeah that's right. So Rafa's had a bit of a change up this year, you've got a new sponsor on board. Rafa Condor JLT, yeah don't yeah. forget that. Yeah that's correct, yeah we've had Sharp for the past three years, they've been a really really good sponsor. Obviously Rafa and Condor have been involved for over five years now um, and JLT are insurance brokers that uh, have come on board, they came on board in uh, middle of October they agreed to uh, work with us so they've come in and, and we're, we're very pleased to have them on board. JLT are very big here in uh, out here in Australia as well so it's uh, yeah it's uh, it's looking good for another year for us. There was, there was never any worry with Rafa going to Sky and no. Sharp going to Garmin? No no not whatsoever the uh, Sharp actually uh, you know, came to see me in April of last year to say that they had this opportunity of you know, of, 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 of teaming up with a, a pro tour team, uh, and I, I just said, look, out of all the pro tour teams that you could go with, you know, other than potentially Sky, I thought TV Sky might be yeah. a good fit for yeah. them. Uh, but I think that was, the, you know, that would have been too much money for them. But I think the, the Garmin one for them is a, is a good fit for them. Um, yeah, and that was good. So we knew very early on that Sharp was going to be moving on. It gave us ample opportunity to look for another sponsor. 
So, yeah, Will Raff have close connections now with the Sky team for developing riders? I think, I think that's still in its infancy. I'm not sure if that's going to, you know, if we're going to be able to capitalise on that. I'd yeah. like to think we could, but at the end of the day, the rider's got to be, you know, the rider's got to be good enough. It's as simple as that. There's going to be no favours at that level. You're either good enough, you know, to, you know, to be a pro tour rider or you're not. So, yeah. I, I think uh, it's still a case of it's the legs that will do the talking more than anything else. It won't. Uh, you know, it's not going to be. A, you know, it's obviously going to be an asset to be, you know, to be associated with uh, you know, one of one of Sky sponsors. I think you, you're obviously going to be looked at a little bit more and, and listened to a little bit. More. But the bottom line is, they're still going to have to, you know, do the do the business on the bike itself. Excellent. Okay. Thank you ever so much for your time. No problem at all.